going to go ahead and get started. It's 6.06. Welcome, everyone. Um, we are, this is the Echo Fund meeting that we look forward to every April. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Okay, I'm just I'm just curious. Um, she disappeared. <clears throat> okay, there was a, someone else on here a minute ago, and she disappeared. Okay, never mind. Okay, let's. Okay, we always start off each meeting with a reading of our mission statement. Um, Sabina, would you like to do the honors? I would. And this was not at all pre-planned. <laughs> no, I just, you know, you know. Uh, Webless mission is to provide an inspiring forum for women to explore and advance their creative development, to promote their work in the marketplace, and to infuse the community with their spirit of cooperation and invention. All right. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, we are, I would like to say a special hello to our newer members. Um, Cindy Jennings. Hi there. Hey. So what brought you to Wibla? Well, we, we were invited to come and speak. Margo invited us to come speak and um, the Perry, Perry, Joe and I, and um, we had a lovely time. We thought you guys were um, engaging and interesting and um, we're thrilled to take advantage of the lovely gift of the membership. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And Perry, Joe, you are also a new member. I can't, I'm, I'm a, I'm a package deal with Cindy. <laughs> so, okay. so what she just said. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. And I'm looking now there is one, I see a box that says Lori, but it's blacked out. I'm not sure which Lori, if it's the Lori, Lori, I'm thinking of Lori, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but I don't think anybody can hear me. I don't know what the heck I'm doing as usual. We can, we can hear you. Okay. Who? Okay. I, I think I, if I hit share screen, I think I'll pop up. Maybe. No, just no, on, not... the, uh, on the lower left-hand corner, mm -hmm. you'll, you see the mute button. Yeah. And then you see the stop video. Start video, yeah. Hit that video. Oh, there you are. Thing. Okay. Now my head. Like... <laughs> All right. Um, Lori joined in January. Um, and it, this is actually, this is her first meeting. Um, and I just want to, Lori is my best friend forever. We are BFFs. We met each other in Detroit back in 1980. Uh, we are currently writing a book together, um, which came out of when I won the Echo Fund a couple of years ago, and I had gone up to Minnesota to see her, and then from conversations, we're just, we're slowly writing a book together. Um, anything else you want to add about yourself, Lori? Well, I I didn't look at the email. I'm sorry, but... I was, I was that I have a little, a little thing going on in June and I was working on another painting because I go through long periods of being stagnant and then, then it's kind of, then I don't want to leave my room. <laughs> but I thought, oh, that's kind of rude if I don't. So I just, I thought I, I really start I have to start going to these meetings. So anyways. Thank you. Thank you very much. And she's got a show coming up in June, like she said. So she's frantically trying to get pieces finished for that. Um, okay. Thank you for joining us, Lori. Okay. Any other new? I don't see any other new members here. Um, 
Well, thank you all very much. And I do want to encourage everyone who hasn't already on the member directory on the website. It really, really does help if you fill that out with some interesting little tidbits about yourself, any um, examples of your work and a picture of yourself, of your smiling face. That helps people when, we, especially like if we do collaborations, um, Webla collaborations, or even if one of our members is looking for someone to collaborate with, you know, a non Webla thing they want to collaborate with, that helps them in, in contacting a fellow member. So I want each of y'all to, to I'm, I'm encouraging each of y'all to do that. <clears throat> All right. Um, Thank you everyone for joining us. And now we are going to the program of for tonight. Melody, would you like to introduce that? Yes, I would. Uh, tonight is the night when we do two things. We hear who uh, hear how the recipients of last year's Eco Fund spent their thousand dollars, and then we choose. <laughs> Uh, the blind drawing, who will be the recipients this year. So for our new members, the Eco Fund is uh, the short name for the Educational and Cultural Opportunity Grant. It's a grant actually, uh, that we started awarding our members in 1999. So as of the end of tonight, we will have awarded $50,000 to oh, wow. members. How's that for a nice round number? Yeah. And the, the recipients of these grants can use the money in any way that they see fit to further their artistic journey. So this evening, we will have a presentation from Ellen Seaton, the recipient of the literary grant last year, and from Mary Jean Carter, who was the recipient of the visual grant. So I'm gonna start in alphabetical order with um, well, L for literary or E for Ellen. Uh, <laughs> both, both ways work. Um, so Ellen, Ellen des uh, describes herself as, uh, according to her profile, a memoirist and a writer of fiction, nonfiction, essays and short stories. She's also a contributor to the Road Broads blog. I find that difficult to say. Uh, and she's the ambassador for Halloween and all things spooky and the creator of Willow. And just wanna put that out there. If you ever need to know how many days remain until Halloween, Ellen is your go-to gal. Um, and as I've always been surprised that Ellen is the mom cat of a white cat. It, it just always seems strange to me. Anyhow, Ellen joined us as a member of Wibla in 2019, and she became a board member pretty much the moment she was eligible, maybe a couple moments before. I served on the board <laughs> during her tenure, and I can attest that she's been an enthusiastic member of the board and has been a driving force behind many literary events, including Haunted Holidays and some others. And Last year, when the, the board considered sponsoring a writing competition, Ellen was all over it and enlisted the support of the Houston Writers Guild. Her short stories have made me laugh, have made me tear up, and to put it mildly, I'm a fan. And I can't wait to hear how she spent her $1,000. Thank you. One, one second, Miss, Miss Ellen. There you go. Oh, there I am. Okay, and I want to. When I get to share in just a few minutes, then Melody, we will connect again, uh, because I am not real good with techno stuff, as all the board members know, but I do try my best. Um, the presentation I'm making tonight it's about a story that I've been working on, and in order to write the big story, I have been writing many short stories. Um, about uh, my main characters. And I actually have to thank the author, Neil Gaiman, who wrote things like American Gods and Good Omens. Um, he also has done Sandman. Um, 
lots of books. He's very prolific. And he, I heard him speak once and he said, whatever you're working on as your major project, you should always have little side, what he calls knitting projects. Um, and I thought that was a good idea because I was working on a memoir and which was very emotional and all that good stuff. Um, so I would write ghost stories as my little knitting projects. And a character came to me who you will meet tonight if you haven't already met her. Um, and, and at some point during the pandemic, I just kind of said, oh, forget the memoir. That's no fun. And this is depressing time. Anyway. <laughs> so I, I just went on into uh, Willow and the Palladium Theater, which is what you will be seeing and hearing about tonight. Um, also on the ghost stories, I have to blame the Hotel Galvez because the very first Willow story was written about the Hotel Galvez, which is haunted. Um, I've tried to stay at a few haunted hotels between Galveston and um, uh, San Antonio and other places like that. Um, and Sabina and I are real good purveyors of uh, cemetery tours. Um, if you ever get into that, we, we've cut off for the summer because we don't want to do it when it's hot. Uh, we're not going to do it in July, but pick up again in October when it's cool. And we, we have visited cemeteries all over the area. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Sabina, for that. Uh, when other people go on these cemetery tours, they look at a grave that might be cracked or very old or what have you. And they try to get the story and, and feel for the people. And I'm looking at it going, someone escaped. Okay, what's the story here? So that's where kind of my mind goes. Um, I also have to give major, major thanks to Cheryl Rossetti. And I haven't seen her on the Zoom boxes yet. Uh, I commissioned her to create the artwork you're going to see tonight. And that's where the majority of my grant money went. Um, mm -hmm. And that process was amazing because I know what the story looks like in my head. Um, and I know what the characters look like um, in my head most of the time. Uh, it was fascinating to get a visual artist involved who read about the character from excerpts that I would send her. And then she would come up with these drawings. And that was fascinating and so much fun. And I'm so grateful to her. And what I did with the rest of the money, um, I, I take writing you know, workshops and conferences and things all year long. So uh, it was spent several times over um, for that. So, um, and so if we can keep your fingers crossed people, um, we're gonna try to, what do I need to do? You're gonna make me a co-host Melody? You're already one. I got it. Oh, we got yes. Thanks to Melody, along with you know thanking Neil Gaiman and Cheryl Rossetti. Thanks to Melody for helping me because we spent Sunday afternoon with her teaching me how to share a screen and and show pictures. This is the first ever visual uh, depiction of Willow, um, and it's a little tricky because I worked with Willow for several years. And I would never show her face in my writing. Um, and people would say, well, what does she look like? You know, does she have facial expressions? I know she's a, you know, a skeleton, but, you know, what can she do? And I was always worried about how to make Willow a female Grim Reaper, um, you know, when all they have is a skeletal structure and, and a robe. So, um, you know, that's why we've given her a little bit of a waist there. You know, so to give her a little bit of a shape so you can tell she's a female. Otherwise, in the writing, you pick it up. Um, but I even started, you know, out with uh, let's do um, her voice. I talk about her voice and it's not really it's just, you know, tell people Willow's a female and, and then they get it. Um, but this picture is just going to uh, hang in my home forever because it is like literally the first depiction of Willow showing her face and everything else um, and her scythe. Um, and I have to say, uh, some people said, well, isn't the scythe too long? 
I have seen so many pictures of Grim Reapers, the size, they're all different sizes. And I love the way the visual effect of the, the scythe and the robe and how that just really, just really makes that picture. Um, so I am so happy with Willow. Uh, like I said, she's been in my mind uh, for years and she came to me. I was writing ghost stories. She came to me um, and I had a human character named Liz <laughs> and I kept coming up with different ways for Liz and Willow to meet up. Um, and that's kind of where the Hotel Galvez came in, but that, you know, didn't yeah. work for, it worked for a few months, but it wasn't, it wasn't good for the long run. Um, she to go follow the stereotypical images. No. Oh. Hello? Hello? Um, she does not follow a stereotypical Grim Reaper as people think of Grim Reapers where you go in and it's time for the person to die and you, they just take their scythe and whack off, you know, your, your connection to earth and, and you go. Um, since I was a social worker for 30 years, I've noticed that comes out in my writing and Willow is a grim reaper. And since I have been a social worker for the past 30 years, uh, uh, Willow tends to be a social worky grim reaper. And it's not just like, you know, it's your time to die. So she whacks off your connection to earth and, and throws you into the afterlife. Um, no, she will talk to you. She will visit with you. She will um, help you not be afraid. Um, and what she does is as she's working with the person, she gets the person who is, who is dying up to the light, the white light, and then wax off the connection to the um, earth plane as people are entering the light. So that's a very nice, everybody goes into the white light um, and, and they're no longer afraid because they, they have been escorted there by Willow. Um, let's see. Yeah. I've already said things that I'm in my outline. So I'm, I'm surprised I'm actually on time. Um, she can be strict when she <laughs> wants to be. Uh, sometimes people die and they don't want to. Or um, I had a ghost one time who, who when the person became a ghost, uh, didn't want to cross over, didn't want to transition, wanted to get revenge on people, you know, things like that. So then the, the Grim Reapers have to go off and chase, uh, have to chase the, the ghost because that's a bad ghost, you know. And we don't want bad ghosts. We only want good, friendly ghosts on our earth plane. Um, she makes friends with Liz, who lives in a place called the Palladium Theater. It is an Art Deco um, theater where I put it down by Market Square. So it's like it was a movie theater back in the 20s and 30s. And then it became, you know, today a regional theater. And it's in an Art Deco building. And there are several ghosts who live there that she will meet in just a minute. But once Liz moves into, she lives on the third floor of the Palladium Theater because she's the conservator. And that's how she comes to meet Willow. There is an invisible floor of the Palladium Theater that serves as the Sanctum Metamorphosis, which is the uh, regional office for Grim Reapers. Because there's not just one, there's, there's many. Because there's lots of humans around. Um, so you get to meet some other Grim Reapers along the way. Okay, now let's see if I can get to the next. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. Ta-da! Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Um, <laughs> these are some of the ghosts who live at the Palladium Theater. You see the one who's gliding down the staircase that is Lucille. And Lucille worked at the Palladium when it was a movie theater and she sold tickets. And she really, back in the 1920s and 30s, it was odd for women to want to make their own money and have their own careers. And she thought selling tickets at the Palladium was great. She got to see all the shows and loved it there. Uh, she was last seen alive in the balcony. So you often see her coming down from the balcony to join Willow and the other ghosts. Uh, the two ghosts on stage, that is Richard and Olivia. 
Um, they are playing Romeo and Juliet. Uh, they actually were, were actors in the Palladium uh, the, uh, the Theater Company back in the 1960s. And they, there was an accident on stage. And so they actually died during their performance of Romeo and Juliet. But again, they love the theater so much and they in their ghost form will try to help current actors and actresses on stage. And so they stick around just because they love the theater. So you have Lucille who loves theater life. When it changed from being a movie theater to an acting theater, that was just that much more fun for her. Um, so you have, and Lucille was going to be a very minor character at first, but everybody starts liking Lucille. Um, and, and she has told me in no different ways that it's a bigger role and she has gotten one. Um, so she's become one of my favorite characters. Um, so, you know, sometimes these characters talk to you and they tell you what they want to do. Um, Okay, now let me see. We can get another miracle for the evening. <laughs> ah. All right. Every, every story has to have a villain. And this is Gerard, and he is the villain of the story. Um, he is a, oh, how do I, he, he's the money grubbing capitalist real estate developer um, who, you know, only wants to build big buildings in Houston. And so you might pick up the fact that I think too many high rises are being built right now. Um, but his goal is to tear down the Palladium and turn it into a high rise um, like all the other buildings downtown and, you know, turn it into uh, stores and businesses at the bottom and, and condos on top. Um, and then that is Liz, who is the uh, human protagonist. Um, she is an older woman because um, I just, I couldn't write about a, a young, energetic 20 something, whatever generation that is, um, I'd blow it. So she's an older woman. She's not as old as me, but she's middle-aged. Um, and so she has gray hair, uh, but she doesn't dress real old. She um, because she's in the theater, so she always has an interesting wardrobe. Um, but And she goes very peacefully trying to meet with Gerard and talk about how wonderful the Palladium is. It's such an important historic building, um, and it ha adds so much to the story of downtown Houston. And he eventually, you know, they, he gets through with all the easy talk, and and gets very intimidating with her that you know you can either sell me this land now and we'll all make a profit or i will find ways to take it from you um and so that's where that conversation ends and then she has to go back and as you can see he's in one of his very tall buildings because you can see the houston skyline in the background and uh it's, it's just all high rises all, all big tall buildings but there is a way, and it does come out in the story, why Gerard is the way he is. There is a whole backstory to that that comes out in the story. Um, and I find it fascinating. It involves a little bit of time travel and, you know, other things. So uh, I, I will publish the book as soon as I can so y'all can get caught up on that. Um, then finally, there is only need one more miracle for the night. Okay, every good urban fantasy story needs a monster. And this one is named Hextily. Uh, she lives in the bayou and the bayou right around downtown, you know, where you would have Market Square and then you would have the original Port of Houston and all that. Um, and I, I think in my mind, she has gotten started because of the pollution and bad energy and all that comes together and creates this monster. And as you can tell, she's poking her head up. Uh, that's, you know, the edge of the bayou behind her. And then you see more of, of the Houston buildings. Um, she can be very dangerous. Um, he, he can attack people and, and basically he will attack 
a lone person by themselves. Um, he will bite you with those sharp teeth, but you will never have a flesh wound. Uh, you will be damaged, and it's as if the hexily bites off part of your soul, um, and you're damaged, but you don't know how you got that way or what happened to you. It's just like you were I'm okay. On mute. No, no, no. Look, I'm on mute. <laughs> I'm hearing voices. <laughs> it's going to go into the story. You know that, don't you? <laughs> um, anyway, Hextily can attack you. Um, he, he'll, he'll do permanent damage to you. Um, and Willow will oftentimes scout for um, Hextily and make sure that, you know, he doesn't bite any, any more people than absolutely necessary. Uh, so... You have to find out, read the book as soon as I finish writing it. You know, do they save the palladium? Who is it that Hextily is chomping on? Um, does Gerard get his comeuppance or does he come around? Uh, Willow just is everywhere doing everything. And Liz, she and Liz formed this partnership, uh, the human mortal and the Grim Reaper partnership um, to uh, work magic to try to save the palladium. And I think that's it. Um, that's right. Cheryl is on the call now. Hi, yes. Cheryl. Hey, hi, Alan. Nice if, meeting you. <laughs> nice meeting you. If you didn't hear at the beginning, I was giving you all the thanks for these. Oh, things. Um, thank you so much. I, I appreciate I had, I was telling Ellen earlier, even though I've nev never met her, I spoke to her on the phone and uh, we did emails, we did texting. And I want to tell her how involved I was with these characters. I ended up thinking, well, maybe this one's my friend or, you know, things like that. But I have to tell you, I just, uh, it's its a delightful story. What I read, the chapters I read. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was so much fun working with her. And that's it. She's better. So yeah, it's literally. Yes, and Cheryl, it was great fun working with you. And I hope. I have no idea who's talking. Yeah, uh, yeah. so, so somebody, somebody is not. <laughs> again, if I hear voices in my head, it's coming out in the story. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> um, love it. But uh, I hope other people who read this book um, and who have read the short stories that I've written because they, they're come out in reflection. I've read them um, over at the art gallery. Um, I keep working on the short stories to develop the characters. And so bits and pieces of Wibla, uh, Willow has come out um, and Melody's read a, a bunch of them. So I hope people will read these stories and really feel like they can connect either with Willow or Liz or Lucille or, you know, any of the characters you find. Hopefully not Gerard and Hextily. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm going to um, Ta -da! <laughs> see everybody. I am so proud of myself. Thank you, Melody. <laughs> oh, you did great. You did great yeah, on, on, on yeah. many, many levels. Okay, next up is Mary Jean Carter. And let me find iPhone 12 here. Um, we had more people join. Okay. Traffic is horrible. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> to, to get here? Okay. Okay. Mary Jean. So Hello. I met, hi, I met Mary Jean several years ago at church, somewhere around uh, 2018 or 2019. Uh, we're two of the rowdier members of this group. I um, can't hear them, but I can. No, I, well, can I can hear you, oh, Mary you Jean. Oh, sorry. I'm at the art studio. There's a bunch going on. <laughs> okay. So before I knew of her as an artist, I knew that she was a graphic designer. And in January 2020, I invited her to a Wibla meeting at Archway Gallery, and she joined later that month. Uh, according to Mary Jean, her passion of art 
was ignited when her grandmother gave her a large box of 120 Crayola crayons. I never had more than 64, so I'm a little jealous there. Many of our WIVLA members are passionate about their four-legged family members, but Mary Jean is one of two of our members whose passion is on overdrive. Before I knew of her abstract art, I knew about the pet portrait commissions that she does for friends and charity. She is an amazingly active volunteer with RPM, which is the Rescue Pets Movement, and has fostered scores of dogs, primarily pregnant ones. She's also um, one of two current WIVLA members who hails from my Springwood Senior High School, uh, a home of the fighting tiger, tigers. Although I'm sorry, that's a cat and not a, not a dog, Mary Jean. So with that, I am gonna turn it over to you, Mary Jean. Okay. Um, well, I told Melody, I thought it would be more interesting if I actually gave y'all a tour of the art studio where I've been painting for the last couple of years. And the uh, grant um, it helped me um, further that art. Uh, let me see if I can turn, I'm trying to turn the, turn my screen around. Uh, there, okay. Um, so this is the art studio where I have been painting for the last couple of years. That's my setup. Um, the, uh, I'm going to introduce you to my instructor, the fabulous Clemente Garcia. Um, he runs this art studio, uh, LaSalle Art studio and it is unique to any other places in Houston that I've found to to teach art and be a part of an art community. We've got artists here who've painted for years and we have people who've never picked up a paintbrush and Garcia I mean <laughs> Clemente is here to nurture that in us give us uh, the instruction that we need when we need it and just all around we um, encourage and learn from each other. Cece's working on a piece here. She was actually just sharing with us a, uh, her secret to getting glass smooth canvases. I'm amazed at that. Um, Susan teaches school and paints and does absolutely breathtaking marvelous uh, <laughs> marvelous uh, flowers, uh, among other things, but I mean, flowers are her, um, that's her specialty. Just amazing stuff. Um, these are, I brought these in. These are three pieces that I just completed. It's, um, I call it graffiti wall. Uh, it's three separate pieces, um, a triptych. Switching over around here. Um, I finished a, uh, this piece on the wall. I did immediately after finishing a dog portrait. I had a dog commission that I did um, these last couple of months. And when I finish doing something that complicated, I have to just get to abstract, just, just let my paintbrush go. Um, I'm starting a new piece. I actually prepped the canvas this weekend. I'm going to zoom in real close. Um, when I get ready to start a new piece, I like working in textures. So I consider the textures that I put into the canvas as much a part of the artwork as the finished piece itself. Um, here's two pieces that I just experimented with. I just was trying to experiment with all the different mediums from um, pumice, uh, glass beads, uh, had no real plan. Um, several people said, oh, I like that. It was a test. Uh, another piece here I did just testing and playing around with heavy body gesso after I got it on the canvas and I just drug several different tools through it. Um, they kid me because I say everything is a tool from, um, potato masher. Some people would say that's a vegetable masher. I said, no, it's, they would be wrong. It's a texture maker. Um, I find things in the street, which make great ways to put texture on canvases. Um, let's see, I'm working. Oh, this is, a. this is my 
my color uh, library wall. Clemente has done a fabulous job of um, showing us how to mix um, mix various complementary colors to get all sorts of bright other colors. And um, that's about it. Let me just turn this around. Uh, and that's Jean, it. That's Mary Jean, do you have any of your pet portraits there? Or are they all on your website? Uh, they're all on the website. That's why I said um, you can, um, and I'll just uh, put this up. Let me, I'm gonna flip it around again. So anyone who's interested in um, checking out either my pet portraits, that's my website address above, and the one below is Clemente's website for anyone who's interested in uh, it, it, expanding on their paint um, skills or just have a great place to come set up and, and paint whenever they need to, want to. Let me flip it back around. So no, I don't have any of my pet portraits with me because they've all been either donated or uh, been commissioned pieces that I've already delivered. Okay. Okay, they are on your website though. And I put- um, uh, I'm sorry, what, Clemente's telling me something. What? We are on the heaven. To do art is heaven. Oh yes, Clemente just said to do art is heaven. This place is <laughs> heaven. Yeah, this is the, the, the right group to hear that. It is, I, it is. I, um, I put the information in our chat. Y'all okay. uh, her uh, website, his uh, website and, and the address. Is in the chat. So, are you ready to make someone happy, Mary Jean? Sure. Okay. So, well, I wish I don't have a drum, but I'm shaking it up just to explain to the other people in the studio. <laughs> so, this is the um, going to be the winner of this year's. Species going to hold it. Going to be the. Let me flip you back around. This is going to be the winner of this year's Eco Grant. I was the winner last year, and it is a thousand dollar grant to use as you wish. I use mine to further my art education. <laughs> okay, she's making us dizzy. I, okay. I think it's shaking up. Okay, the box has not been opened since Melody gave it to me last week. CC is opening it. I am completely turning around. I don't see. I'm pulling out a piece of paper. Let me flip you back around. Pulling out a piece of paper and it is. Oh, let me flip you back around. Cece's gonna hold it up. <laughs> and this year's Academy and this oh. year's Academy Award goes to Susan. Susan Salter, Susan she's on the Salter. call. Yay, Susan. Awesome. So let me see, where is Miss Susan? Well, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. So much. <laughs> well, I know you're, I, I, I want everyone to see you, Susan, but she I'm having is. a hard time finding you. <laughs> so, um, oh. Just real quick here, we're going to, there we go. There she is. So Hi. congratulations <laughs> on the 2023 Visual Eco Grant recipient. I have some big plans. Okay. <laughs> and I'll great. be excited to share with you all next year. Can't wait. Thank, Thank you, you Mary so Jean. much. Okay, this is for the literary echo grant. Mm -hmm. Reaching my hand in, around and around she goes, where it stops, nobody knows. Margot Toombs. Hey. Okay, Ms. where is Miss Margot? Yay. Gosh, there's so many people on this call. Okay, there we go. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, my, my cousin and I collaborated on a poem 
that that won an award for the acrostic poetry contest in Friendswood. Is, uh, I wrote a poem called um, Lazarus Cloth, and she did a painting, Lazarus Quilt. And so we met in Austin a couple of weeks ago. And so we're planning to make this into a video. And uh, she's a beautiful watercolor artist. And so she's going to be doing some paintings and um, I'll, I'll probably get another uh, video app. And then if there's some money left over, I might have a screening like at uh, 14 pews or something. Uh -huh. oh, oh, yes. I am tickled. This is so much fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yay. Wait. Well, congratulations. Um, thank just, you. I, it's hard to see everybody, but kind of a show of hands. Who has received uh, the ECHO grant? I, I can't even smell. And some people, you know, received it on the first try. Some have been trying and trying and trying. So, um, it, you know, it's the luck of the draw. And uh -huh. all I can say is keep on trying. So congratulations, everyone. That's very exciting. So with that, Miss Miss President, I'm going to turn it back over to you for the rest of our announcements. All right. Well, this this was wonderful. Thank you to both of you for the wonderful presentations. Mm -hmm. And we're excited for the new winners to see what y'all y'all show us next year. Yeah, it's an awesome opportunity. Okay, um, neither of our uh, visual art co-chairs are here this evening, so I will um, just give y'all an update on visual arts. They are they have the prospectus for our upcoming show almost done. It will be on the website within this next week. It is, it, this is our annual juried show. The theme is expansion, um, scheduled for September 1st through October 31st. And um, yeah, we've, we've got a wonderful space for it. Big, large walls, so think big. If you haven't already started your piece, think big. So, yeah, we'll let you know when the prospectus is up. Um, Ellen, do you have anything to say about Poetry by the Bay or the literary competition? You're on mute. Okay. Um, two things in literary. One is uh, the Journey into Art, which is the short story contest we are doing in conjunction oh. with the Houston Writers Guild. Uh, the submission deadline for that was last Friday. So mm -hmm. my hope is when we uh, launch the anthology of the winners of this contest, that you will join us October 6th at the Indie Palooza um, uh, conference that is put on every year by the Houston Writers Guild. And this is their first year to have it back in person. Yay. Um, also, Yay. also, this Saturday, uh, the weather's going to be beautiful for a drive to Laporte. And this is another one of our annual events that kind of got bumped around a little bit with the pandemic, but this year we are back full speed ahead in person. Um, and it is Poetry by the Bay. And the last time I checked, there were still a few slots, not many, but a few. If you still want to uh, jump in on that, go to the most recent newsletter, mm -hmm. and go in through that link, uh, thank you, Sabina, because you made the best link and because uh, other people were having problems with other links. So you can sign up and, and write some poetry. And our point person for that is Gladys. And afterwards, if people want to go to lunch, it's an optional thing. You can. We can. Because um, uh, Gladys knows all the cool restaurants in Laporte, from what I understand. Uh, let me let me chime in here. Uh, that was one that uh, that the past president uh, uh, I think emailed me last night, and the one that everybody enjoyed last year was New New Orleans Seafood Grill, and she's shaking her head. And so I provided her with that information uh, last year. We also took a, a drive to the bay, 
and uh, and that was fun. We may not do that. It was going to be a gorgeous day, so it may be too many people who don't live here go out there. And I usually go when it's quiet and crazy. But we, you know, if anybody wants to partake uh, partake in the New Orleans seafood, uh, it's it everything is within like a less than a mile away from because uh, I live on the Bay Side and the and the and the uh, library is on the really the Bay Side of Laporte, which is less than a mile away from where the library is. And it's a very easy, non-intimidating drive <laughs> to get there. Okay, so I just and wanted to say it, that. And, and it's not far from Sylvan Beach, right? Right. That's what, that's, that's where we're going. Nice, it's less, yeah, that's so a it's nice, exactly nice it. It's, it's less than a mile from Sylvan Beach is where we, I took them just kind of for grins, just to, uh, if they wanted to see some some ships passing by or see yeah. all the craziness they can. Or if nobody wants to do it, that is perfectly fine. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up at 12 30, 1 o'clock and everybody can head home and and have dinner at uh, brunch, dinner, whatever, early dinner at their own house. So it's great. <laughs> but I gotta say that that was some fabulous food at that restaurant. <laughs> I mean, for those yeah, of us, okay. for those of us that went, and I think some, I think a couple people who went there then went yes, there they have. for they lunch have. Um, before our. Uh, collaboration reception if i'm yes we did yeah mistaken. yeah okay. uh, who, who was it? it was uh gail gail and her husband but uh, they right. wanted to go back and eat some more and somebody else came down yeah. so. that was good good stuff um and for all the writers in the group uh i will everybody gets kind of a break during the summer but you should not stop writing because <laughs> coming up in november that's when we pick up again uh with haunted okay. holidays and the november reading meeting and so don't stop writing but you have a, a few months there where we don't have any formal writing exhibits going on so keep writing and uh, i'll start pestering you again in november may and, i say something yes gladys yes, and, and 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 lou I'm, I'm picking back and off of what you just said about in november the you know uh we'll start back with writers um and i think it's going to be important to know that this this time around, we will have a little bit longer daylight because I don't think we're flipping back to the regular time in November. So if we have um, events that are in Houston and that are away. Maybe we could have them maybe starting at four-ish so that six o'clock, 6.30, seven people can be heading home because for those of us who live alone and don't like to be in Houston uh, past dark, uh, since we will have a little bit more daylight, you know, it's not going to get dark at 530 and might get dark at 10 to 7, which gives us a little bit more time to, to, to uh, so I'm planning the next big riding event, which I think you said November, Ellen, maybe, you know, whatever day, let it, if, if possible, because I'm still working, I'm still working, I haven't retired yet. It's always nice to, I like to attend and it is, it does get a little cumbersome um, coming in at nighttime. Um, you know, so that's what I wanted to mention. And Laporte is in the middle of the day. So there's no worrying that's about it. the sun's going to mm -hmm. go or the poetry by the bay. Mm -hmm. um, 11 o'clock, 11 to 1. So I just put the name of the restaurant up um, in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, there will be an email going out tomorrow, I believe, uh, that has, not for the, the readers, but for the listeners, for those of us who want to go out and listen to the, the poetry. So there was information uh, there. You can go to our calendar page. There's a link to the calendar page where you can RSVP that you're coming. It's not necessary, but it gives us and the library kind of an idea about how many people to expect. I mean, you do not need to eat. You don't really need to eat at all that day if you go to this event. There's a ton of food there. When you arrive at 11, uh, maybe have a little crumpet of you know of toast or something before you leave in the morning. Tons of food when you get there. Big lunch afterwards. Uh, you can take something to go, and then dinner's mm -hmm. dinner's done then too. That's so good. it's a it's a perfect day for us to visit. Here's some great poetry and uh, fast fiction and have a good time with each other. Mm -hmm. Good day. Hey, cool. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Margo, would you like to give us some teasers of what's on the horizon? 
Uh, yeah, our member meeting next month will be by um, Elise Davis, who is the librarian and uh, one of the managers at the Young Center. She's going to talk with us about the magic of small things. Oh, and if you need a shot of positive energy, this is for you. I mean, she is, she's an incredible person. And so she'll be our presenter in, in May. And then she is hosting us on Sunday, the 21st of May from one to four at the Young Center. It is free. Uh, the student slash staff art exhibit will be up. There'll be tons of art. So we can, we can go for a tour of the bookstore slash library, look at the art. And then one of the rooms will be open. We'll be the only people in the Young Center. One of the rooms will be open. You can write about some of the artwork. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will be a lovely afternoon. And while I'm, I'm mentioning that, be sure to put the week of May 21st through the 27th on your calendar because we will have one, two, three, four. We have four things coming up that week. Wow. And they are, they are all free and fabulous. So I put the, the link to our calendar. So please check the calendar. That's the, the first place that I, that I put things that I plan. Um, we have a workshop coming up with Kate Wise Orcutt. Uh, Corey's going to do, probably do a workshop for us uh, maybe in October. And um, so a lot of stuff will be coming up. So I'm, I'm very excited. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, I'd like to hear what we would all like to hear what y'all have been doing. Does anyone have any um, thing artistic that they would like to share with the rest of us? It can be a project that you're working on. It could be a show that you're about to have or something about to be published. Well, Miss Anyone? Melody, I was just um, juried into um, a show at um, Artist Gallery in Magnolia. Oh, the, the theme is um, Bloom. Yeah. And, and the things that they selected were two pieces that I made from Magnolias. So it's in Magnolia. It's they're called Magnolia Blossom One and Two. I mean, it just seemed to. And the mm -hmm. thing is, they they didn't ask for the titles of the pieces when you submitted them, so maybe she'll be surprised when she finds out. Anyway, my stuff's kind of abstract. She might not have realized what it was. That is going to be um, for the uh, the month of May. So I'll be taking I'll be taking the pieces there, um, April thirtieth. Okay, and when is the open? Is there opening reception? May, May uh, sixth, the Saturday at five o'clock. When I okay. when I told my husband, I said I have good news and bad news, and it's all the same thing. Uh, <laughs> he said, "You got in. Where is it?" <laughs> yeah, got a little out of town. <laughs> the last show was Conroe. <laughs> yeah. Well, be sure to put that date on the calendar on yeah. the web calendar. I will. Thank you. How about anyone else? I'd like to share that I have a new podcast and it's entitled My Cotton Patch Moment. And um, and it is about me growing up picking cotton in Alabama and then having those aha moments about, well, it's about not wanting to have that as a job. And then, uh, well, it's, it's um, and when I had the opportunity, I fled that place like I had the, like like the plague. So um, I'd love to have feedback on that if anybody is interested. Like I said, it is my cotton patch moment, and I am Mildred J. Mills, and it's on all of the. Um, some of you've heard it. I think Melody has, mm -hmm. and um, it's on all of the major podcast services. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Could, She's got this smooth voice. There's some background music. I mean, yeah. it's like totally professional. Thank you. M Mildred, would you put a mention of that in um in the, in chat? the member directory? Yes. Well, in the chat, yes, but also in the member directory, please. I will. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for suggesting that. Lee. You're on mute. Got it. 
I've been so day. quiet all night. I've been good. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now's um, your moment. All right. Here it goes. Um, the printing museum, as you know, has moved and it's at the corner of San Jacinto and Elgin in Midtown. And um, they uh, had kind of a soft opening a couple of weeks ago when we had the Books to Eat at a Houston Edible Book Festival uh -huh. there. And that was a lot of fun. We had a good turnout. But now, uh, Saturday afternoon, if you're not um, comatose from your New Orleans seafood, <laughs> <laughs> and adventure in um, Laporte, there is an opening uh, later Saturday afternoon, I think it's four to six at the Printing Museum. It's a book arts exhibition. It'll also be part of the grand opening of the museum. And um, Erica Lee has put together a uh, an exhibition about the, it's called uh, Book Arts of Houston. So it's all about the history of um, um, the Houston Book Arts Guild, which uh, Corey's been in it, and we and Lane's been a part of it, and there's been a lot of crossover with Wibla and the Printing Museum and Houston Book Arts Guild, and um, several of us who are book artists will have some pieces in the exhibition, but it'll just kind of uh, um, show um, how making books is not dead <laughs> and we've been around all these years and making things and um uh so it, that runs april 22nd to june 17th so yeah saturday's a busy day but you have all the way till the middle of june to slip on over to the printing museum see their beautiful new space and check out this show and just kind of look at and don't forget to go in their bathrooms because <laughs> they're gorgeous. <laughs> All right. Wallpaper. So that's the printing museum, corner of Elgin and uh, San Jacinto. And um, go put it on your calendar to get there over there in the next few months. Okay. Uh, nice. Excuse me. How is the parking? Is it is it street parking? <laughs> is it parking lot parking? Is it paid parking? How is okay, it? Now they have a lot. So when the museum is open, um, on the San Jacinto side, when they have an, an, an event going on, the gate will be open and they'll have a, a gated lot you can get into. There's also some spots in front that are not gated. There's a bar next door that they don't want people from the bar to park there. So you know, they're really watching it. Um, for the Books to Eat Edible Book Festival, I parked around the corner on another side street. There's lots of side streets and other street mm -hmm. level parking you can find. And the museum was good about um, telling us an, a, a site a block away where they were, you're allowed to park without being towed. And no one oh, towed okay. my little car. So um, I felt safe doing that. Okay. You can always check with them first and check out their website, printingmuseum.org, just to see what else is going on. Tons of things coming up. So. Okay. Just wonder. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Margo. Yes. Okay. These, these things are in the calendar, but um, the uh, May the 6th, the first Saturday, I will be projecting some videos of my roommate John dancing in black with some color things going through it on the wall of the Manil outside uh, from 830 to, I think it's 830 to 9. And then on the 13th, you might remember the, the, the ladies from Hot Poet they presented yes. to us last year. Okay, they are having a fundraiser with another small um, journal in Houston. And, uh, it's a spaghetti dinner. There'll be some um, gluten-free options available. And I will be doing some comedy um, as, part of the, as part of the fundraiser. So be sure to you know come if you can, it'll be fun. There'll be an open mic. So if you have, some poetry you'd like to read or a small like five minute selection of something you've written you know you can participate in that and um i might do a a wine tasting at the end but with m&ms instead of wine so 
<laughs> I'm going, that's a piece I created. Like it was the first video I made for YouTube was wine tasting with M&Ms. It's really ridiculous, but it'll be fun to revive it. She's right. a picture of you with a spaghetti. I know it's terrible. I take terrible pictures, but yeah. anyway, yeah. it made you look. If it made you look, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, anyone else? For me. Rona. A Rona. Okay. So um, May 6th, also for Saturday, um, yeah. the silos, uh, many of the artists are participating in a fundraiser for the Rose um, event. And there'll be a pop-up table with pieces under $100 where all the money goes to the Rose. And then um, like we'll do, we'll have ribbons on some of the studios where a percentage of pieces of sales of art pieces will be sold uh, for okay. the, with the, going to the Rose. And it it's uh, oh and I think there's going to be pink champ pink um champagne or something that was donated and mm. so it should be a nice event um, mm -hmm. and encourage people to come buy Mother's Day presents for the next week. Yeah, good. and the roses. If, everybody knows what the rose is, right? I think they so. Raise funds for oh they raise funds to um uh do um breast screenings and mammograms for people who can't afford it as well as people who can but definitely people in care so it's it's a good group to raise funds for as a female or you know, oh that's good a female artist but there'll be a lot so um just inviting everybody it'll be at the silos that day from like 12 beautiful to oh and there are artists demonstrating and um i think there's gonna be some art making opportunities Great. Thank you. Okay, Donna. Uh, there is a reading this Thursday at Archway Gallery. So um, I, I think that the reading list is probably established, but if you'd like to come and hear wonderful stuff, uh, starts mm -hmm. around 6.15. We generally bring a little food or wine to share, and it's a great sort of friendly event with good reading. Sort of friendly? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, is, it is writers that they get together and they talk a lot among themselves. And it's, it's, it is a very friendly event, but it's uh, uh, also, and it's very, there is no critique or anything. Uh, we're just sharing our words with one another. Okay. So, but it, it is it is a very, very quality sort of thing. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, man. Okay. Anyone else? I don't, this is Corey. <clears throat> yes. I don't know. I don't think this was mentioned um, that in May, Maybe Margot's waiting till May to um, talk about it, but there's Michelle O'Michael's tour of her studio. Oh. And then there was one more thing, Margot, what was it? Okay, on, on May the 21st at 11 a.m., we're taking a tour of the, oh God, what's the library at the MFAH? Hirsch? The Hirsch, yeah. That's we're, the 26th, the 26th, that's right? That's the 26th. Yes. Uh, the 27th is um, in the morning. We have Michelle O'Michael's studio visit, and then at three, from three to five in the afternoon, Becky Soria is going to give us a talk about her work that will be up at the Archway Gallery. So, and all of this stuff is in the calendar. So, yeah, please check out the calendar. Yes. For okay. Activities. Thank you, Corey. Cool. Mm -hmm. Happy to. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else? All right. Well, and I would I would also like to remind y'all um, that if what you have coming up, if you have something coming up in May or after, um, 
be sure to send a notice to Sabina for the newsletter, newsletter at wibla.org by the 20th so she can get it in there. And I guess that's it. Okay. Great. Okay. It was a great meeting. Um, congratulations to the winners. Here. Yes, congratulations. That's right. Congratulations. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next month. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye.